Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are coming to you from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank in beautiful Alpharetta. Folks, today you're connected more than ever, whether it's your friends, your family, or your life. Renaissance understands how you bank, offering the mobile banking services that you need. Renaissance also knows that sometimes you need to speak to real people with real answers, and that's why they've got more than 190 convenient locations throughout the South ready to serve you. For more information, go to renaissancebank.com. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. Now we turn to two old friends, two great guests, Joel Peskin with Big Event Productions and Hans Meyer with North Georgia Promotions, among other things. We'll get to the other things shortly. Uh, But Joel Peskin, we'll start with you. Joel is with Big Event Productions and well-known around Atlanta, the networking king. Thank you for having me, John. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm going to name you networking king, uh, even though you're not going to claim it, right? I get out there. Okay. <laughs> That's right. You've been around. Okay. Tell For those that don't know you, and there are not many of them, but the, for those that don't know you, tell them a little about you and what you do. Uh, full background or just uh, re- recent background? Oh, please don't give us the full one. Just <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's, that's right. No, no. Tell them about Big Event Productions uh, first of all. Uh, Big Event Productions was, uh, I guess, formed after I've went to so many networking events, a lot of chambers, business associations, and I decided to do events designed more for the attendee, for the attendee to really get something out of it and connect with people more on a regional basis than a local town or county basis. Uh, We started that in 2012. We started with about 300 people on a database, and at 2020, we just hit 15,000 subscribers in the database. That is that's awesome. Uh, And so you put out a and and let's get this out real quick. You put out a monthly or a I'm sorry, weekly uh, newsletter every Sunday. Comes every Sunday afternoon. uh, Joel's list. Tell tell people about that. Comes out. In the winter months, about 5.30 in between the football games on Sunday. Something tells me that's delivery. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, We've been doing that again for about eight years or so. It lists about 100 to 150 networking events a month throughout the whole metro Atlanta area. Um, You could get on that uh, newsletter by subscribing at www.joelslist.com. You could uh, register there. we basically hit about 60 organizations uh, throughout the Metro Atlanta area. We list all their events, their network events, their uh, breakfasts, their after hours, their lunches. So it's a great resource for you to see what's going on in the area. And we've sure. been doing that at a while. And uh, we don't uh, list any kind of closed networking events because they're internally driven and they're, they're basically closed. So not just anybody could show up. Where right. Everything that's listed, anybody could walk in from anywhere. Yeah, the, it, whether they're a chamber or a business association, they might pay guest fee, but but it's open. Yes, they're open. Yeah. Um, so the whole idea of this, uh, whether it's the events that you put on or um, the information that you pass out in Joel's list, is to is that folks are looking for maybe more than just their local business association. They're looking to expand their reach beyond just their local chamber, local business association, and and you seek to help them do that. Yeah, it was, again, we sent out this newsletter to a lot of people that I saw at a lot of events. And mm-hmm. then I just kind of came up with the idea of like, well, let me do my event without all the selling memberships. Or it's really just a, a business after hours with any political implications whatsoever. I don't mean by politics. I right. Mean just, you know, we're not selling. We're not having the board of members up on stage and all that. It's really we wanted just two hours of you to meet people, network uh, and build relationships. And, and that's what it, we started it out in Johns Creek and, uh, we did a lot there and then we slowly went out to Cobb and we were, uh, a great reception in Cobb and we, we go to Gwinnett. So we go to the three big counties, um, and we're basically all over the place. And the, the event that we put on is called the big event. And, uh, that basically is, a uh, 
an event that companies come to me and because my database is so big, they want the attendee to see their property, their venue, their hotel, their bank, sure. their restaurant. So it's more – it's really designed to promote the venue that we're at, mm-hmm. not necessarily the event itself. It's right. like every day, every month we're at a different uh, venue. Well, and I think that's why – your events are so popular, right? Because people know it's all about networking. Yep. Is uh, I, I don't get up there and talk. I, I barely could talk on this radio show. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. You're doing a pretty good job, Joel. Uh, but uh, uh, no, I think people know you're about networking. You're about connecting, and um, that, as you say, you're there to promote the sponsors and the and the venue. Uh, but at the end of the day, people know they're going to make great connections. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so after I started doing these monthly events, about a year and a half into it, uh, I I came up with a wild, crazy idea to do a business expo. Now, everybody was doing business expos. I remember that. But their expos were really all about that county, whether it be Mm -hmm. Fulton, Cobb, nothing's wrong with that, but it was really all about that. And the people who came were all about that. Right. Since I had a database that was all over the place, I decided to... uh, Actually, I had no name on it. All I did is send out an email saying, I'm doing an expo. Who wants in? And that was the day after 4th of July. And you can't believe how many people actually answered and called on July 5th. Really? Like, why are you not on the beach? Or why are you not on vacation? <laughs> and right. called. They could have said the same thing about me, too. Of course. And I had absolutely no expectations, zero. Mm-hmm. I just put a price on it. I know I was less than half of most of the other ones. But it wasn't about the money. It was just... I wanted to see what kind of reception I'd get. And sure. About 40 companies took a shot or believed in me, and we had, we had a, 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 a great first time, didn't know what to expect. We had about 40 companies, as I said. The second one, we had almost 70 companies. I mean, whatever happened, the word got out. Mm. But what was really interesting, the second one was on Snowmageddon. Oh, yes. I remember that. And that was pretty amazing. <laughs> that, was, so. that was crazy. <laughs> so uh, that's really – Cool, because when you did that, as you say, there were a lot of folks, a lot of chambers doing expos, and now you expos are endangered species. It seems like because the expos uh, the chambers have quit doing them. Well, the reality is uh, times are really good now, so a lot of people, somebody will spend the money. That unfortunately, the attendees are not there like they used to be. It just mm-hmm. it's a cycle. You know, right. if the economy starts uh, going down a little there'll be more people out there looking. Sure. So everybody's doing good. They don't have to go out and run around network. And, or know. they don't think they do. Well, always filling the, you always yeah. got to fill the place. You always have You to. never know when a deal goes south, you want to be out there. Right. Um, so fast forward a little, we're actually on our 14th expo, but I just want to back up to one thing. About six months ago, a friend of mine who left one of the big chambers said to me, would you be interested in doing a job fair? I'm going... What do I know about a job fair? Well, you know how to promote. I go, that I do. <laughs> I <laughs> go, sure. you find the companies and I'll promote. And I, of course, I know a lot of companies. So mm-hmm. I told some of my top companies, hey, this is what I'm doing all that. So it's actually on March 4th at the, um, at the Metropolitan Club on Winwood Parkway. Awesome. Noon to 4 p.m. I have no expectation. I told all the companies that. We're advertising the heck out of it. Uh, and we'll see where that goes. Right. Right. Cool. Um well, I want to dig more into that, but uh, but since we were talking expos, you've got one coming up, so let's we got to get that out there and promote it. On uh, Tuesday, January twenty eighth, uh, from four to eight thirty p.m. at the Cobb Civic Center, the Great Atlanta Business Expo. Uh, our title sponsor is Comcast. They've been great over the years. Uh, they just love what I do, and they, mm-hmm. they just like the the camaraderie of the people who come down. So sure. it's free to get into. You just got to go to greateratlantabusinessexpo.com, get your free ticket. You have to get your free ticket by the 23rd, or we're going to charge you. And I'm amazed how many people don't get a free That's ticket. It's unbelievable. <laughs> then they'll call me, hey, uh, I missed it. I said, for four months, I've said, get your free ticket. Yeah. Right. Um, Hans is taking your money at the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And Hans will take your money at the door. Uh, uh, but, no, folks, get a free ticket. That's pretty easy to go get one. Um, so uh, you've got some great food vendors this year, too, I noticed. 
Yeah, we have uh, On the Border. Uh, we're probably going to have Cracker Barrel back again. We have a, a company called Juiced Up Bars, so giving mm-hmm. out some healthy drinks. We right. have a company called Russell's Coffee. and We've never actually – people are always asking, you have coffee? No one had coffee. We had Coca-Cola there, Coca-Cola products. Uh, and we have a coma events. They're a, a caterer. She does great catering. So mm-hmm. we have, we're still working on one or two more food vendors, but free admission, free food. How do you not want to come down and have fun? And the great thing about your event, because so many people come, it's really almost like a big networking party, right? I mean, it's all, you can go uh, check out all the different uh, v- uh, vendors. There's a ton of them, uh, but there's also a lot of room and a lot of opportunity just to meet other people that are there. Yeah, it is. And what's interesting is, again, we've been doing this for a while, but obviously I'm not from the Atlanta area, no, though I sound it. But oh, I've come never on. Seen, <laughs> I'm a Southerner, Southern <laughs> yeah, Brooklyn. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, what's interesting is so many local, obviously a lot of local people come that were born and raised here, and they show up to the, this event, and they hadn't seen someone in 20 or 30 years. Mm. Like, it, it's almost like, wow, that's exciting. I've done, I've reconnected people that haven't seen themselves by accident, you know, mm-hmm. but you never know who'll show up, you know, right. and it's, uh, they come from all over. Be there, or be square. That's it. Yeah. So Joel, tell people a little bit about your background. You mentioned you're from South Brooklyn originally, mm-hmm. uh, but tell people about a little bit about your background and we only have, a, you know, the next two hours here for you to do that. So, <laughs> so keep it short. I'll, I'll okay. It well, it all started in uh, February 64 with the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I, my, uh, actually, my uncle took me to my first concert, and I was completely blown away. I said, I need to be in this business, and I've went to thousands of concerts, was in the music business for like 17 years, and after I finished that career, and I had real long hair, and I looked like a heavy metal rocker, I went on Wall Street, which is a 180, and my family said, wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> so I'm saying my wow. friends. <laughs> Uh, so I did that, but actually while I was in the music business, when I had, you know, off time, when I wasn't on tour, uh, prior to that, I was actually speed skating and I went to the 80 Olympics and I saw luge and I'm going, you know, that looks a lot easier lying on your back and going faster. I'm going to do that. Luge is easier than speed skating. Yeah. Just lie on your back and let it rip. (laughs) 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 And, uh, so, uh, about two years after the Lake Placid Olympics, I got involved in the United States Luge Association. I raced in world cups. I tried out for the Olympic trials for Calgary in 88. I did that. Then after the music business went on wall street and we decided to open up an office in Atlanta in 96, just before the Olympics. I came down here in 96 and I've been here for 24 years. Awesome. And you just so happen to have a carpet cleaning business. Oh, yeah. yeah right? Yeah. You want to tell people about that? Um, I work uh, mainly uh, for people who know me. I, I, I do not advertise. I don't have a website. I work. I have about 4,000 realtors in my database. We do stretching and repair, a lot of move-in, move-outs. But if you know me and you want a good carpet cleaning, you just got to give me a call at 404-447-7001. There you go. And your tagline is? Uh, keep drinking, keep spilling. You want the other one? <laughs> sure. If your cup it looks like crap, we could fix that. I love it. I love it. So, <laughs> Joel Peskin, he's with Big Event Productions and sometimes Carpet Cleaner uh, on the side as well. Um, so, Joel, one more time, I want to get make sure people uh, know where they need to go to get information on these events. So, first, let's give them the uh, where to go to get their free ticket for the expo you go to www.greateratlantabusinessexpo.com don't search it just type it in the address bar if you want to find out about the network events go to www.joelslist.com and that'll get you everything and also with my monthly big event you could go to the big event the number one.com and you could see where we're doing our big monthly big events and and then the job fair so this is for folks that are looking for jobs and for maybe employers yes, as well. Yes, so yes. you're still accepting employers that want to uh, uh, exhibit there? Yeah, we're looking for employers, and you could actually on that one go to greateratlantajobfair.com. There's awesome. all the information there. Awesome. Joel Peskin. Thank you for having me, John. It's great to have you here. Joel Peskin, Big Event Productions, thanks a lot. Uh, folks, if you need some help curing headaches that involve administrative tasks, bookkeeping, marketing presentations, maybe a workshop needs to be planned, well, go engage a smart and reliable office angel. 
They're not a temp agency or a placement firm. Office Angels matches your business support needs with angels who have the talent and experience necessary to help you maintain or grow your business on an ongoing or as needed basis. Your terms, your timeline, they lend a hand when needed and fly off when the job is done. Find out more at officeangels.us or call Chief Executive Angel, SES Cabido, at 770-442-9246. And now we turn to Hans Meyer. Hans is with North Georgia Promotions, among other things. As I said, we'll get to those things. But uh, Hans, welcome. Thank you, John. Thank you, John, for having me today. Yeah, great to have you here. So tell us a little bit about you and North Georgia Promotions, NGA Promotions. Well, NGA Promotion is, is a uh, screen printer and uh, promotional products uh, vendor. And what's neat about us is we're a homegrown in North Georgia. We're a family-owned provider. We provide quality promotional products. And because we do a lot of the items in-house, we eliminate the middlemen so we can uh, give better prices. And it makes a big difference. You, you, need, to have, you need to have these products uh, number one, if you're going to events so people can get back with you, they've got your information on them. Or if you're going to events, you need to have embroidered apparel or screen printed apparel that have your logo on them, just like you would any uh, college football team or mascot you wear. Sure. and But people are sometimes shy about this, right? They are very shy a lot of times. I mean, they will promote their, their college team and wear it all the time, but they don't promote their own business, especially if they're small business. Right. Um, talk a little bit about promotional items and, and for that matter, uh, embroidered items. Uh, I mean, how, how do you work with a client? They come in and they say, hey, I need some help on, on like what to use, right? What kind of products ought to employ? Talk about how you work with a client. Well, sometimes like right now, and, and we've have a long during the year, we have sometimes we have the manufacturers of the various promotional products will come, come to a local area. And what we can do is we can invite our customers or clients to come with us and they can see what's new in the industry that might fit in their, uh, their particular marketing uh, ideas or, 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 planning that they're trying to do. A lot of times what people do is they, they think, okay, I need a promotional item. I need a pen. Well, pen may not work in their area right? or, or a pen may not be the thing that they want to give to somebody as that. Thank you for giving them that business. It may not be at the right value point that they need. You know, maybe they need something different or they're going to a trade show. They got to have something to, to give to people that come to their booth so they can talk to them because they want those people to come so they can get their business. And from an, from an embroidery standpoint, you need to, you know, you could buy it on the web and whatever, but if you have a problem with it, you have a problem with it. You're going to have to get with them this way. We're local. We can get with you and make sure it happens. And all we really need is a good logo that is able to be able to be sized and we can, we can do the rest and make it happen. This just in the internet doesn't call you back. That's what I've heard, right? They, especially if there's a, especially if there's a problem, right. especially exactly. if there's a problem, they yeah. their numbers non-existent, or it's from a different country. Yeah, we won't say where. Right. Yeah, well, somewhere far away from wherever you are, right? That's correct. Um, so, who are the best customers for promotional products, promotional items? You know, people that we don't, you don't really think of, but people that are out in the marketplace all the time. If a person has a landscaping business, these landscapers are out there, you know, doing, doing yards or doing commercial businesses or whatever. Well, you got two things that are opportunities. One, you want to make sure that, you, that people driving by know who is doing it. So maybe you can get business from that, but you also need the safety of these people so you could get garments that they wear that have reflective tape on them or are reflective in nature, and then they don't get injured as badly on the site. Uh, plumbers in the trade are good for that because it gives them recognition when they go into homes or go into businesses, uh, electrical, uh, heating and air, and those type areas. You know, people have a lot of businesses. And then – and then sometimes we got to think about it when you go into the sc for schools, schools when they're doing field trips or when they're or the churches when they're doing activities. And we laugh at it sometimes, but but when you have uh, 
you know, 200 kids going to, let's say, Savannah for a field trip, um, it would be nice that you knew all the kids in the blue shirts or blue T-shirts were the ones you're trying to get, and you got this one blue one running to, running away. You might want to go take them down. Sure. <laughs> That's right. They're easy to track down. Um, uh, any favorite items you're seeing out there, or innovative items that maybe people don't know about that uh, you're recommending these days? Well, there's a lot of, lot of items, but, I mean, items that – can go on a person's desk and they don't get just put in the drawer. That helps. Uh, sometimes if you're doing a, a trade show and you say, okay, I'm going to give pens away or this away, that's nice. But a lot of times if people are going to trade show, what happens? They've got kids at home, mm. okay? So therefore, when they come home, it would be nice. You know, maybe maybe it's a football or a little football, or something that, that maybe they give to the kids. Maybe it's a Frisbee. Mm. Well, you don't think of that necessarily as a business item, but the trick is the parent takes it home, the kids like it, and where do they do? They take it to all the local parks. They take it wherever they are. And so now your name gets out, and it doesn't get put in a desk drawer. Sure. So you've got to look at what you're going to use it for and whatever. And, and a lot of things right now, uh, I think the uh, different uh, – uh, items you can use for charging stations or battery battery packs are are, re- are really good things, but they're a little bit more expensive. It just depends on what your advertising budget or your marketing budget can afford. But there's a lot of items, and there's and you can also give you know like I said some people if you want you could give blankets mm. you know for people that are cold in the office. You think about it or whatever, but you know sometimes. You use marketing products, you can use them as your way to get your foot in the door into businesses, and you might not do anything the first time, but you leave your card and leave that piece, they will probably might come back and talk to you later. And I think part of the point here is that you've got access to literally thousands of different kind of items, right? And well, let's just say not thousands. Let's say millions. Okay, there you go. Let's say millions of <laughs> items. I shortchanged and, you. Sorry. And and, and and let's just say your colors are green or whatever. I mean, we've probably got 200,000 items that are green. If that's sure. green is your color or whatever right. it is. That's another thing is a lot of times you get something – and we can make sure that we can put your logo on it. Sometimes these co- companies that have multicolored logos, hmm, you, do you really want to pay for the multicolored logo sometimes where you could do get away with maybe uh, it, it engraved or laser etched or whatever, and it would look more professional right? and it'd be cheaper. Now, uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and but the point of it all though is is that people I, th- I think sometimes people think promotional items they think you know pins and not much past that but there are literally millions of different items that they can look at that uh, could really change their business because they're innovative right yeah you name like I said you name it i mean like I said there's i mean if you have a business and we saw it we we see it at our networking groups john sometimes is i mean you got you've got people let's say they're 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 remodelers mm-hmm. okay they could do cutting boards, okay, and have sure. their name engraved on it. Or you could do kitchen utensils, or you could do athletic products. Just depend. I mean, whatever item you're looking at, or whatever arena or your business is in, what would work for your business? We kind of go down that road and find out what items would work. Give them a list of those items and and various price ranges, and they can pick and choose what might work for them. And the nice part about it sometimes is we can get them a physical sample so they can touch and feel it and see if it's what they really want. It's not a piece of junk. And, uh, again, that's part of the point of uh, the NGA Promotions business model is you actually have a showroom. So people can show up and look at items as opposed to, you know, you're working out of the trunk of your car. Yeah, we have a showroom, but it's by appointment only. But so we don't take care. So I make sure I'm there. But what I'm saying, yes, we can show people. And then from time to time, there are shows around the Atlanta area or metro area, which we call, which are basically shows that the custom, our customers, we can take our customers to that they can see new products. I've mm. got one coming up in February. I'm inviting my clients to some of my clients to go to and and those are shows that give 
the client is like a kid in a candy store and they have a they can look and see and then what happens they pick the items out and then I can make them a give them the prices of those items they picked out and they can see where they want to go but that way they can touch and feel it awesome now uh we're speaking with Hans Meyer and Hans is with North Georgia Promotions or NGA Promotions um as it were and I said uh, that Hans is involved in a lot of things and I want to get to some of those things uh, Hans you're pretty active in rotary Yes, I'm active in Rotary. You're, you're mildly active, right? Uh, perfect attendance for 25 years. I yeah. would say that's active. Yeah, it's fairly active. I've been yeah. in a couple couple clubs, and I was, you know, past pre- past president, and now I'm uh, on my uh, final year of a three year commitment for assistant district governor, and I'm in charge of the uh, five Forsyth County clubs, mm-hmm. and uh, that's in District 6910. And it's a lot of fun. Rotary, if if you don't know, is the largest uh, service organization in the world. We have 1.2 million members, mm. and it's not a it's not a it's not a networking entity. But when you go and see your fellow members every day at a luncheon or a breakfast or whatever, you can't say networking is not happening. Sure. And even along that same line, it became kind of uh, not to do networking that's how it started because that's how rotary because it was a it, it started that way but we started a, a pro, we started a fellowship called rotary means business which is a networking group which strictly the attendance just like Joel on his thing the only rule for attendance in this there's no money the attendance is you have to be a rotary member mm. And and do, being that you come in and uh, we have it and it meets the in our the one I belong to meets on the first meets on the first month meets on the first Monday of every of every uh, I mean last Monday of every month. Okay, okay. Now let's give a shout out on on. I mean I know you're you're going to push Rotary regardless, but you're part of the Lanier for Scythe Rotary. So why don't you give a shout out on where you meet and when? Okay. I meet at uh, Lanier Forsyth Rotary. We meet on we meet on Tuesday mornings. Uh, meeting starts promptly at seven thirty. You need to get there about seven seven o'clock, and it's a breakfast meeting. We have right now. We inducted uh, on Tuesday. We inducted five new members, and we're at about ninety six members. And we meet at the North Side. We meet at North Forsyth Hospital, right in on just off of four hundred. And like I said, if somebody wants to join. You need to really join a Rotary Club that where you live or where your business is to be beneficial so you can serve and serve the community you're in. Great work. Um, so, Hans, you've also got another little pastime. You're a woodworker. Yeah, it, I do a little. And you're a professional. I dabble in it. Yeah, you dabble in it. You're a professional. Uh, I don't know about that. Well, professionals are Folks that get paid for what they do, right? You get paid for 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 your work. Yeah. Tell people about your your woodworking. Well, I'm like I said, I started out uh, woodworking. I uh, I'm a scroll saw, a self self taught scroll saw person. I've been doing it probably for twenty or twenty five years. I probably have about forty five YouTube videos out on on the site. Uh, not any that I've done in my basement shop. Are, are all programs that I have given over the years at uh, Gwinnett Woodworking. And, uh, and then I, now I start dabbling in uh, wood turning. I do some of that. So I do a lot of uh, scroll saw puzzles, and I do bowls and, and tops and whatever you, whatever you need wood. I don't, I don't build big furniture, but, you know, I could if I wanted to, but I just, that's, not my, that's not my thing. But right now I belong to Gwinnett Woodworkers. We have about 72 meetings a year. And it's fifty dollars to join, and if you want to go, we meet at Peachtree Woodworking, and you can go out to Gwinnett Woodworkers uh, on the website, and you can see our calendar of events we're having, and and come, and you could be my be my guest. It's not a not a problem, and we do all aspects of woodworking there. And then on the on the third Wednesday, I belong to the uh, Atlanta Wood Turners Guild. We meet at woodcraft on Holcomb bridge and we meet there get there at about 
Uh, we usually get there at five o'clock. We go out to eat, but uh, meeting starts at six thirty, and it's wood turning. We have wood turning wood turners from throughout the world that come because we uh, consolidate with three other clubs and bring them in from England and Canada and France and wherever. And so you can see some fine wood wood turners, and you can learn a lot. Oh wow! Now, for a lay person like me that doesn't know what you're talking about, what is wood turning? Wood turning is you put it on a lathe, and what you're doing is taking a block of wood, and then what you're doing is turning it, what I'm going to call between centers, then using tools that look like, I'm going to say wood chisels, that's what most people would know, but they're really lathe tools, and then what you shape it, and you can shape them into goblets or bowls or plates or, mm. or whatever you want, and then you've got people out there that make funky art out of it by turning it off center by turning it off center and they get different things but i'm saying or a lot of us know and a lot of people have a lot of friends probably they turn pens sure or they turn wine stoppers or they turn small stuff but what i'm saying you can start small and just like just like on the uh, scroll saw side scroll saw is a is a saw it's very similar in nature to a sewing machine from the standpoint that the blade goes up and down. Mm -hmm. It's safer than a sewing machine because the sewing machine goes up and down, but it is attached on the top and it has a needle on the bottom (laughs) that a lot of people get in their fingers. A a scroll saw goes up and down, so it's one of the safest safest saws. I've gotten to the point where I have classes and I teach, you know, 8-year-olds, 9-year-olds, and 10-year-olds how to scroll saw and I've had people that come to me, the kids have come to me, their parents said, well, my, my son or daughter wants to learn how to scroll saw. Can you teach them? I said, I'll teach them. And then what they do, what's really funny and, and it's, it's really makes me feel good is they'll come back to me and say, for Christmas presents, I made my grandmother a keychain to hang in the door because she kept losing her things. And that was done by the nine year old or 10 year old. And then her second comment, which I always laugh at is says, you know, she even liked it better than the robe we gave her Christmas the other (laughs) year before. So, you know, those type things. So it's a very safe saw. It's extremely safe and you can do a lot of things with it. And like I teach the kids, I mean, they can use coloring books, they can use, you know, whatever, and they can make anything they want. And, I saw one kid, what he did is had an allowance. He took his allowance and put his allowance back in the bank, took $5 out and bought wood or found wood. He saved the money he got for the Christmas gifts. He made them all. Wow. Awesome. That's really cool. Um, So Hans, for folks that want more information about your uh, woodcrafts, Want to want to uh, find out more? You've got a website. I have a website. It's not good because I'd rather to be in the I'd rather be in the basement sawing than I would uh, working on the web. But uh, it's it's called Hans HansPuzzles dot com. And and folks can get your contact information there if they want to reach out and touch you and and uh, maybe come to a craft show you're exhibiting at what have you right that is that is correct and my mm-hmm. next and my next craft craft show coming up. Uh, not doing as many as I used to. I used to do like 25 a year, not do as many, but my first one of this year will be in February. It will be at a show that's well known. It's called Fireside. Mm. It's at Unicoi. Oh, Unicoi awesome. Unicoi State Park coming awesome. up in, coming up in February. And you say, well, it's cold out, but it's a totally inside show and it's a very nice show. It's been going for about 50 years. It's a, it's a great show. Awesome. Hans Meyer, uh, North Georgia Promotions and Woodcraftsman extraordinaire it's great to have you here for those that want to want to be in touch with you would like more information on any of what we've talked about tell them how they can be in touch you can uh reach me by going to my website or you can reach me by hans at hanspuzzles.com or hansmeyerpuzzles.com and thank you john for yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my, absolutely. And give folks your phone number just in case they want to my call you directly. My phone number is 404-403-2858. Mm-hmm. Hans, thanks for being with us. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, folks, just a reminder, we publish this show at least once a week. Uh, uh, certainly every Tuesday morning, we, we do a live show at 1130, and then we do special shows throughout the week like this one. 
But if you miss any of our live shows, you can find us on Apple Podcast, Google, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, uh, t- YouTube, uh, pretty much your any podcast app you want to talk about, we're there. Uh, I have yet to be stumped, so try me out. Uh, just search for North Fulton Business Radio, and you'll find us. You'll find this show and many others. We're coming up on almost 200 shows that we've done over close to f- four years, and um, it's been quite a ride. We And we are the voice of business in North Fulton, so check us out at NorthFultonBusinessRadio.com. Uh, you can find our archive there and uh, search for uh, business leaders of all stripes and and uh, uh, industries. Uh, check us out on our social media channels, uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. On all three of those platforms, we're North Fulton BRX. So for our guests, Joel Peskin and Hans Meyer, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio. Renaissance Rewards Extra is the checking account that checks all the boxes. Roadside assistance? Check. Cell phone insurance? Check. More than 400,000 local shopping discounts? Check. Up to $25 per month in ATM refunds and a great rate? Check. All in an easy-to-use mobile app. To open an account or find out more about Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking, go to renaissancebank.com or visit us at any of our more than 190 locations throughout the South. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender.